Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera with you this morning. We are pushing into fall now. Can you believe how fast this year's gone by? And I'm sitting out here on the porch. Hopefully it will... I have a cat trying to sneak out the front door. <coughs> Story of my life. So, um, I wanted to update you all. I haven't done a video in quite, quite a while, over a week or so. Um, and... Um, a lot of you guys on my Facebook and maybe some of you on my Instagram kind of have an idea of what's going on. So I wanted to update you uh, real quick. I'm not going to go into heavy, heavy, long details because it's a week's worth of information and lots of details. So I'm going to cut to the chase just to get to the point. So there's a couple of points to this video um, and I've talked to my husband about it right before we, right, well, even again right before now. And uh, he said just speak the truth and there's points to this and people need to know. That's what Appalachia's Homestead is about. I said, okay. So, if you don't know, my husband um, um, basically is very compromised with now <clears throat> what you could basically consider a, a chronic illness, okay? Um, you're talking about an individual who has basically all of his life had zero health issues. He did have some problems when he was young with some hernias and different things like that. Kind of knocked him out of the football game situation. Um, but that happens to people. That's not necessarily uncommon. Um, <clears throat> he started having a lot of trouble. Well, it's kind of weird. We're trying to pinpoint everything because um, he has started having some issues. We, I would argue in the past 30 to 60 days, but it wasn't anything that you could note as one particular thing. Are you getting an upper respiratory infection? Are you getting a sinus infection? He was having trouble breathing. <clears throat> he wasn't sleeping very good. So then, you know, he was fatigued during the day. Long story very short, um, a little over a week ago, um, it really got intense. So I took him to Knoxville. That's where we're from. Where I'm from. And uh, took him to um, the hospital down there. We actually, took him to the general practitioner first. We took him to the doctor that we had down there. And um, as soon as they started talking to him about all of these different things, of course, the first thing they do is they say, we're going to do an EKG. So they did. <clears throat> Came back quite abnormal. So we then proceeded to the emergency room. And we were told, you're probably going to be admitted. So you're going, what's going on? Um, <clears throat> we did have a... In our minds, in my mind, as I'm driving him to the emergency room, I'm going over in my mind. We were at a restaurant in August, and he broke out really sick into the restaurant. Okay, no necessary, you know, no chest pain per se, but he got really sick and really pale, and was—you've never just the sweat. And he's a big guy, okay, and hot natured, but this is not what I'm talking about. So. Um, Long story short, we, we end up in the ER. His blood pressure um, was being monitored, EKG being monitored, um, and they had to admit him. Fast forward, we ended up doing, they said we were going to do a heart cath. So in your mind and through a doctor, through a cardiologist, you're mentally preparing yourself for, okay, he, he probably has some blockage, you know, uh, we're looking at some stents maybe, you will get in there get that done. Um, I personally was just, I always think of worst case scenarios in my mind, right? Because I want to mentally prepare myself. Preparedness. And um, I'm thinking he, if, what if he has to have bypass surgery? So long story short, he has the heart cath done. Um, he's on, you know, some medications. They're monitoring all kinds of different things. And it comes back completely normal. The reason they did the heart cath and what was abnormal through what we could see through the EKG and, and different and the sonograms and different things like that is that his ejection rate, that's the level in which his heart is <clears throat> pumping out blood. Um, most people are somewhere in the like, 55, 65 range in terms of percentage, 65, you know, you get a little bit off on numbers on that, but um, his is somewhere between 35 and 40 pretty significant especially for a man his size okay so um, <clears throat> no blockage 
His cholesterol is great, right? Um, his blood pressure is relatively low. I think my blood pressure might be higher than his. And so you're sitting there and the doctor comes in and says, there's good news and there's bad news. Good news, your husband um, doesn't have any blockage. Doesn't have to have a heart, any stents, no bypass. But your husband's heart is fairly or too extraordinarily compromised. The entire structure, the globalization of the entire muscle. That's exactly what the cardiologist said. So you're sitting there and you're like, what? And uh, of course you go over the reasonings for how these things occur, which some of you may have experienced this. Um, I certainly have, I've heard of it, <clears throat> but I've never experienced it with anybody that I know. My husband at some point has um, gotten either, and there's a list of items. There's a list of items that can cause this, okay? <clears throat> um, the most typical ones are things like the flu, strep, mycoplasma. So you're talking about vi strains of viruses, um, even potential bacterias that, you know, you get sick and you may not realize it but while you're sick and you're dealing with you know body ache flu type symptoms or sore throat or things that these things can cause or cough right mycoplasma um for some people it attacks their heart so <clears throat> that's what we are looking at here with my husband there is no fix to this um it's not like you can go in there and do heart surgery and repair this this is an entire issue of the entire organ um, there is no I because I point because me sitting there thinking all of these things there is no fix what we can do which you need to know this is why I'm discussing this <coughs> is obviously he's going to be placed on he's on various medications now my husband has never taken medication <clears throat> ever okay other than like you know if he got you know Mucinex or you know whatever he's never had to be on blood pressure medication he exhibited no symptoms of issues until it was just like boom uh, he could not walk he could not uh, he was having he was not having chest pain or anything in the arm but he was having extreme pressure he can't he could carry anything I mean this man can okay do a lot physically and <clears throat> now he can't so long story short he is now finally home <clears throat> I'm sorry to keep clearing my throat fall is in the air um, we are going to have to go through an extensive list of medications we're trying to get all of that right uh, right now so um, that's the the main issue there um, he is obviously home from work for, and it will be for a while no brainer there um, and we are going to have to start a lot of series of um, traveling to various you know to doctor's appointments and a lot of therapy so <clears throat> life at Appalachia's homestead suddenly has changed which leads to a lot of points that he and I have talked about um, points that I have talked extensively about with Starry I want to go ahead and say right now that not only my family but particularly you know very close family um, but I want to mention just a couple of people real quick because if there's some people that you need to tune into or can tune into or ever take advice from, these, these people are sincere. Uh, Deep South Homestead, they've been so sweet to me. You know, they sent the carousel package to me and we talk online and th these things like that. Um, they have basically been checking, checking in with us almost every day or sending prayers or, you know, that means a lot, okay? They have really made an effort. Um, Starry, I've talked to her almost every day on the phone. She has called me, um, goes out of her own way to pick up the phone, walk her driveway, and call me. And, you know, we've had uh, just, i got to call her today. I, I told her, I said, I'm going to call you net this time. She calls every day and checks on my husband. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, that woman is a, guys, I told my husband in the hospital when she called one day, because I was telling her what was going on, and she was verbally going over everything with me. And I told my husband, I said, I've learned more from her in 10 or 15 minutes on the phone um, 
than I've done anywhere else in this hospital so far. She's just, it's, a, it's almost like a different person. It, it, it's just so educational and so sincere, and she's called every day, and so I thank you for that, and I'm going to call you this afternoon, I promise. And, uh, of course, Miss Homestead Lady and our neighbors and, and things like that. So if, if you're in tune on YouTube, Deep South Homestead and Starry Hilder, I'm telling you right now, um, those are the people, point blank. I mean, uh, Jim Buck and Meyer in Knoxville, the historian, a lot of these people. I mean, these are some, they're not just good people or um, in, in tune people or people you may know. They are sincere people. And so, so long story short, the homestead has not slowed down <sighs> yet, um, you know. But I'm having to micromanage a lot of things on my own simply because even though I do a lot of things during the day, there's a lot of big projects, a lot of heavy lifting that I just physically can't do. Um, I'm not a big person. Uh, you know, I'm kind of a little gal. And um, so, you know, you rely on this entity that's always working with you on certain things on your homestead. Uh, my children, my two older boys in particular, uh, their life has changed real fast. They were always doing things, but now it's a whole different scope. Um, so we have a positive outlook on this. I will tell you that if this happens to you, um, here's, your, here's your course of possibilities. You have your damage um, by the cardiologist. He said, you know, we can't change it. He said, but we can help it and we can sustain what we have, hopefully, with good medications. And I believe in that. I believe in modern medicine. Okay, folks, I think there's a lot of things that have been given to us by God with doctors and nurses and modern meds. There's a line in my mind with it, but I do find it to be a blessing and we're not going to, you know, I'm not gonna look, we're not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, okay? Um, there's also a lot of things that we're going to do naturally. Weight loss is obvious as much as possible trying to get into an ideal weight um, simply so your body can manage better. <clears throat> so we are having some tweaks in the diet. We're not necessarily removing things from the diet, but there's going to have to be modifications in the diet. You know, it's funny because he said, I'm going to have to start eating more like you because I love avocado and fish and almonds and probiotics and heart garlic. You could like douse me in garlic and I wouldn't care. Um, so that's a lot of changes. He's, and he's very open to that. Um, so medicine and diet, um, and a lot of follow-up. The next move, if, if things don't go well, which we're not saying they will or they won't, my husband was, is always giving me a thumbs up and saying I'm the man of steel, so we're going to get through it. Um, the next move is a defibrillator which isn't necessarily uncommon, but for a man to suddenly be at 46 to be told his heart's been attacked and has to go have a defibrillator, that's kind of big. <clears throat> if that fails or doesn't work or whatever point that stops working, the only option is a heart transplant. So um, that's a lot to take. So anyway, so I wanted to update you and let you know what's going on. We're going to keep videos rolling. I know you're going to sit there and say, don't worry about it and don't don't stress about it. We, I know what people are going to say, and I appreciate that, really. But in some ways, you know, the farm has to continue as much as possible, and the homeschooling's got to continue, and our life has to continue. So, you know, this is what we do. It's what we enjoy, and my husband is totally encouraging us to continue on this path and to continue to take you along the journey. And, and as he said, he said, just tell them the truth. Maybe it'll help them. So... Anyway, so that's what's going on. We appreciate your prayers and all my friends, and uh, everything is still on the radar. Um, we have a slowdown, obviously, right now with things um, that have been scheduled, but as my husband said, we're going to get back in the game. So we're going to get back in the game because that's what we do. One last thing I want to mention, which has been a very huge focus in the conversation with me and Starry is Starry and I, me and Starry, whatever is uh, um, preparedness is really important, folks. You know, we have a lot of things that we've worked on and done that when you have our one-man show or, and your spouse or child is compromised or a crisis happens, I'd call this a crisis. This is a personal crisis. 
you know, I don't, I don't have to run to the grocery store right now, which is quite a ways away, okay? Um, we have a lot of things here that are really good uh, medicinally that, you know, with obviously education and finding out what we can and cannot do, we have it on hand, okay? If my husband were to have to stop working and, and life really changes for us, my kids are going to eat for a long time, okay? Um, we've got prepared, we're already prepared for winter. Uh, we still have things to do and I'm going to be doing, but, you know, we're backed up. So I just want to tell you that I'm a living, breathing example that, you know, you don't have to lose electricity and be hunkered down in a hole, scared of what's going on around you for your preparedness to count. It's not about what would you do or what if or maybe it's about when and <clears throat> it may not come in the form that you think it's going to come in if you had told me a month ago i'd be sitting here filming this video i would tell you you were crazier than a goonie bird i've been told i was crazy for what we do that's okay i'm feeding my kids and i'm taking care of my husband and that's why we prepare and that's what homesteaders do and uh we feel positive about this and we thank you so much for your prayers and your support and our channel and our life is to educate you and to take you along for the journey so that you will know of all the possibilities um, good and bad and uh, that's what's gonna keep us going we love y'all thank you so much um, you guys just are always great and uh, we'll keep you posted. We'll keep you informed. Um, try not to be too mushy or sappy because I won't get through a video if we go there. So and that cat is still trying to get out the door. So I'm going to go take care of that. Talk to you soon. Like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Um, we're, I'm still trying to keep up with all of that. Sometimes it's light. Sometimes it's heavy. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this rolls. God has a plan. We'll talk to you soon. Y'all take care.